We're dealing with the questions you asked us about. And so today you guys asked us, what about the Holy Spirit? Now, this is not going to be a completely comprehensive study on the Holy Spirit. We're going to answer every single question that you have and go into great depth. We just can't. We could do that if you like. We'll be here to about 7 o'clock tonight. If you want to be here to then, I'll enjoy myself, and I'll be here alone. <laughs> so, but we're, today we're talking about who's the Holy Spirit, and what does the Holy Spirit do? And so the three baptisms, embracing the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I say the word Holy Spirit, what do you think? Go oh, ahead, you can say it out loud. God, anything else? Okay. Well, all right. You guys are so polite, not like the first service. So, but what do you mean say the Holy Spirit? What is the, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? And it's almost like um, when people hear about the God the Father, we're, okay, I'm kind of okay with God the Father. And God the Son, because we believe a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so God the Father's good, God the Son's good, and the Holy Spirit's kind of like that strange uncle that you invite to the dinner table, but you hope he stays quiet over there, right? The Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit thing, uh, you know. And a lot of people ignore the person of the Holy Spirit. He's a person. He's a person. And so some people call it the Holy Spirit, Versus the Holy Ghost. So what's the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost? There's no difference. It's just the same word used in the English. It's pneuma, spirit. And so when I was growing up, I was afraid, but I was very thankful for Casper, the friendly ghost. Now, we don't want to teach kids to talk to friendly ghosts, okay? But as a kid, it kind of helped me. But also, I remember watching a Christmas Carol, yeah, and, and the, last, the last guy, it scared me as a kid. Even the Mr. Magoo cartoon special. You guys haven't seen that. It's classic. Even that scared me. Old ghosts, right? The Holy Spirit is not a ghost in the area of something that goes around and scares people. Or, or No, nor is the Holy Spirit an it. Some people call it an it. The per, he's, a per, he's not an it. Cousin it. Remember cousin it? Okay, he's not cousin it either. Well, who's it? Holy Spirit is a person and very much a part of the ministry of Jesus, and Jesus has told us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What on earth does that mean, and how can I achieve it? Now, how many of you feel like you have all the power you need? You have all the strength you need. You don't need, God's given me everything I want. I don't need anything else. Is there anyone here that would be honest enough to say that? Okay, so that means everyone here in this place could use more of the person in the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to explain to you, first of all, about Jesus, and then how Jesus operated in the Spirit, and then how you and I can be filled with the Holy Spirit. First of all, Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus came to earth. Jesus had two main purposes in coming. The first purpose is the absolute most important thing that he did was he was the sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of the earth because the first Adam blew it and made a mistake, Adam and Eve, and God said prophetically through the seed of a woman there was going to come someone that would crush the head of the serpent, and that was Jesus. So what was going to happen is sin entered the human race. You and I are not perfect. I don't know if you've noticed that. You make mistakes, and we have a sinful nature. We're born with a sinful nature. Doesn't mean we get excuses for it. It means that we continually work to eradicate. It's like you dust your house. It's like you cut your lawn. How many of you have a jungle in your, in your house right now? Okay. It's been a lot of rain. It's been hard to cut the glass. But if you don't take care of stuff, it comes back, right? So you and I constantly have to become free in the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is available to us. We're going to talk about that. But Jesus came, first of all, as a sacrificial lamb. And for the first 30 years of his life, he operated like you and I did. According to Philippians chapter 2, although he was God, he did not equate equality with God, something to be grasped, but emptied himself. So what Jesus did is he laid aside his power of heaven and limited himself to be a human being like you and I. He got hungry, he got tired, he got upset, the whole nine yards. The vast difference between Jesus and us is this. We needed a sacrificial lamb that was perfect. 
Jesus never sinned. Although he was tempted to sin, he never sinned. According to Hebrews, he faced every sin, every temptation you and I did, but he chose not to sin. He had the power over it. So Jesus was going to be the second Adam. The first Adam messed up. Jesus is called the second Adam, going to take our place and, and take the sin of the earth and going to die on the cross. As John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the earth. Now, Jesus, if he came to earth, and he, and he came up and he preached the, preached the news, and he was put on the cross, that would be enough for you and I to have salvation. He didn't have to do any miracles except rise from the dead. Didn't have to walk on water, didn't have to cast out demons, give blind, uh, open blind eyes or open deaf ears, didn't have to do any of that at all. He could have still been the sacrificial lamb because he was God and he was perfect, okay? Much of the church teaches this only. He's a sacrifice, give your life, and my friends, it's the most important. Without this, nothing else matters, does that make sense, right? Nothing else matters but that. However, that's not only the reason he came. He also came to inaugurate the kingdom of heaven on earth, to bring the kingdom to us supernaturally. So at the age of 30, Jesus went to the Jordan River. He went to the Jordan River, and the Bible says the following. It says, and the Holy Spirit descended on him. He was baptized in the water. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. It was not a dove. Okay? The Holy Spirit's not a dove. I heard a pastor that was preaching on the Pentecost Sunday about receive the Holy Spirit. And he had a little boy on the attic. There was a little hole where the vent was. It took the vent cover off. And he had it like a dove. And he told the little boy, when I say and the Holy Spirit fell, you need to throw the, throw the dove down. It's going to fly through the sanctuary like we practice. Because Okay, okay. All right, so, so the pastor goes, and the Holy Spirit fell. Nothing happened. Second time, and the Holy Spirit fell. Third time, and the, he says, and he looked up, where's the Holy Spirit? And the boy said, the cat ate it. <laughs> so I thought it was funny. Thank you so much for humoring me in that one. But, but many times we just forget about it. It's not important. It's not necessary. Actually, what I would tell you, it is necessary. I know you're going to see in a few moments. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. Prior to this period of time, Jesus, according to what we've seen, lived like you and I did, except for the fact he was perfect. Okay? How many know someone that's perfect? Okay. How many of you think you're perfect? You need real help. Okay. You are my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And John bore witness and said this, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. In the past, in the Old Testament, the spirit of God would come on someone for a certain thing, but here it remained, which is extremely significant. And it remained on him. I myself did not know Know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and what? Remain. Remain. This is he who, what? Baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Who baptizes with the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Do you see that, everybody? Okay? So Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's how he began his ministry. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. You know, I was just studying this this past week, and I think sometimes what happened, the first thing that Jesus did, by the way, was not to face the world and have a great ministry. He first had to make sure his internal heart was, was in a good place. And he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. And guess who brought him into the wilderness for temptation? God didn't tempt him, but he brought him to a situation for him to be tested. That was the Holy Spirit. And Jesus had victory over the enemy by the power and work of the Holy Spirit. And I was just thinking 
A lot of us sometimes think that the Holy Spirit's all about signs and wonders, but sometimes the greatest thing that you can have in your life is the Holy Spirit helping you to overcome the temptations of the enemy. And many of us are not having victory because we're not facing it. It's a spiritual battle. And to win in a spiritual battle, you have to use spiritual warfare and you have to use the power on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit to overcome temptations, to overcome situations, to overcome a spirit of poverty, of depression, whatever it is, without beating yourself up in the name of Jesus. Now, one of the pastors I know Larry Stockstill, a great pastor, I had a great uh, chance to spend four months with him with another 50 pastors. He would joke around with, he would actually tell us, he says, you know, guys, I'm a guy. He said, when I see something, when I go to the beach and I see something I shouldn't, you know, if I'm looking, I say, Holy Spirit, <laughs> Holy Spirit. So from now on, women, if you go to the beach and your husband goes, Holy Spirit, you know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But he was, literally, he would say that. He said, listen, he said, guys, I call on the Holy Spirit. I'll say it, Holy Spirit. He'll walk in the mall, Holy Spirit. I'm serious, he would do that. Because I don't want to make any provision for the flesh. Right? There's nothing wrong with seeing something beautiful, right? You can't stop a bird from flying over your head. As, as, uh, but you can stop it from making a nest in your hair. And that's what, then that, that's what by, by the way, Martin Luther said, the church reformer said that. So we should employ the power of the Holy Spirit for self-control. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So maybe some of you are struggling with this. I worked in New York City, a teen challenge, and I was talking to Abraham, the man that was one of the directors. He said he gave his life to Jesus, and he received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and he was immediately, he was set free from his addiction to heroin, didn't have one withdrawal sitting. But for 50, yeah, go ahead. But for 15 years, struggled with pornography. And he, had a, he said, I had to learn to walk in the power of the Spirit. And I did. And then finally, I felt, okay, I'm ready to get married now. So we should employ the power of the work on the person of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. Okay? Follow the Holy Spirit. So, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and report about him went out through all the surrounding country. And Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord, he said, he opened the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord. He actually said, okay, now my ministry is beginning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to pronounce liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set all at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So Jesus was empowered with the work and person of the Holy Spirit. I hope you understand that. Prior to that, he could have died and gone to heaven and we'd still be saved, but he didn't just come for that reason. He came to inaugurate a new kingdom. He came to show his disciples how to function in the spirit of God. And he sent them out on, on, on missions and he would anoint them and then their spirit would come back. But he says, you'll see in a few seconds. I'll show you. Jesus said this. Whoever believes in me, this is what Jesus says. Whoever believes in me, if you give your life to Christ, Okay. As the scriptures have said, out of his belly, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. Now, in the Old Testament, New Testament, they often talk about the belly. That's why a lot of men have big bellies, because we're full of the Spirit, <laughs> if you're in case you're wondering. <laughs> but what's so interesting, you know, in America today, you know, it, it, during Valentine's Day, what do we do? If you have a Valentine's card, you give a what, picture of a heart, right? Well, in that day, if, they were, if we were living in the day of Jesus, we would give Valentine cards with a stomach on it. I love you with all my bowels. I mean, that's what they would say. I love you with my bowels. And some of you love your spouse with your bowels. You need to stop it and love with your heart. Okay. Whoever believes in me, out of his belly, that's kind of what you're feeling, right? Out of his belly will flow, not a cistern, not a stagnant water that you received 20 years ago, but what? Rivers of what? Living water. You know what happens when water gets stagnant? 
get paramecium in there. It gets disgusting. And some people say they're filled with the Spirit, but they've never refreshed themselves, and there's stagnant water, and it's putrid. So, we'll flow with rivers of living water. Now, this he said, this is Jesus, about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive, were, future tense. For as of yet, the Spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, Jesus said a few other things. Nevertheless, he says this. Jesus is talking to his disciples and us. I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. What? What are you kidding me, Jesus? We've been praying for you for thousands of years. Now you're coming. Now you want to go. It's to, to your advantage that I go away. Why? That the helper, paraclete, Holy Spirit, will not come to you but will depart, I will send him to you. So, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Who will send the Holy Spirit? Who baptizes in the Holy Spirit? Jesus. So he's basically saying it's to your advantage. Basically saying, hey guys, listen, I've lived my life perfect. You're not perfect. But everything I've done by the power of the Spirit, that same Spirit that's gonna rise you from the dead, I'm gonna give to you so you can continue the ministry that I have. I'm limited to one space, one place, but when Jesus was glorified, now we can be everywhere through the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. He said this, truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. That we can see miracles today, and by the way, they're happening around the world, and they've even happened in this, this place. How many of you in this room have received a miracle? Look at all the people raising their hands, right? The book of Acts summarizes 30 years in a couple pages. God is working today. I've seen God heal people of cancer. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen uh, someone uh, get healed of back trouble. I, and I've even, I even reported people that seen the dead raised. Thank you. <laughs> and again, so the same spirit that rose Christ, is, he's available today. God is still working powerfully today, then why don't we see all the miracles? Well, let me tell you one part of the reason is you and I are full of sin. There's blockages that we get in the, the river of living water. When you hold unforgiveness, you kind of put a rock there. When you have unbelief, you have a rock there. The spirit of God still flows through. Jesus had none of that to deal with. He had no barriers at all. And he knew the perfect will of the God. He said, I do nothing unless I see the father do it. Just what Jesus said, abide in me, and you will bear much fruit. So what we want to do is get rid of the barriers. Not, this is not a spiritual totem pole. I hope you understand that. It's not about that. It's about letting more of the Spirit flow in our lives. Sometimes, you know, it, sometimes if three people take a shower in the house, you turn on the faucet to, clean the, to do the dishes, and it's kind of not coming out enough, right? You need to get turn out the other things that are drawing from the water so the, so the spigot can come out in full force. And sometimes what happens is you and I leak. Look at your neighbor says, you, you leak. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do because I go unto the Father. And we see some greater works. We saw it in the book of Acts. So they, we never saw Jesus' shadow healing anyone. We never saw the things that we see in, in the book of Acts. The ministry of Jesus continued. Are you, are you tracking with me? Now, there are basically three baptisms I want to show you right here, okay? The first one is this. First one is, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. What's the one spirit? The spirit of God. No one can come to God but the spirit of God. So who baptizes us? The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus. You can see it throughout the scripture. Baptizes us into Jesus. The Holy Spirit opens a door where Christ comes in and the Holy Spirit is in you. But there's a difference between having the Spirit of God in you and having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You'll see in a few moments. Okay, just bear with me. And let me just stop here for a moment. I, if you're brand new to this, count yourself lucky because there's been a lot of debate about this that's been unnecessary. And part of the reason is that people abuse the spiritual gifts. And so be like, I, don't, I have nothing to do with that. How many of you have seen people abuse money? Right? I know people that abuse money. So if we had the same logic that we should get rid of all of our money because people abuse it, of course not. And some of you seen showboating. Have you seen showboating Christians out there? 
They walk around like they're superheroes. I am the anointed one. And I can throw my jacket on you, or I can do something wacko, or listen, God, I don't know why God works some, some, and it's very theatrical and all these types of things. You know, God's not into that. He's not into all that theatrics. You know what it's about? It's about giving glory to God. It's not about giving glory to ourselves. There are people out there that use their academic proudness to, and I'm going to do the Greek and the other, and they try to impress people with their education. They try to impress people with their leadership capacity. They try to impress people with their persona. They try to impress people like me with their physical, uh, muscular body like me with the washboard abs. This is why I wear a jacket to make sure I keep everyone at bay so no one has to say, Holy Spirit! <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you for doing that. I, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> but all kidding aside, what happens is a lot of people um, abuse it, unfortunately, and they run after the signs and the wonders that says, these signs and wonders shall follow me. The most important, of course, is Jesus. It doesn't mean we throw away the Holy Spirit. But as far as I know, as, far, as long as I'm here, one of the things the Lord's impressed upon me, Cornerstone will not be a showboating church. We're not going to be about putting people on the platform. Well, I am on the platform. We're not going to put people on the platform to show off. Look at me. I can prophesy. I can lay, oh, hallelujah. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being excited. There's nothing wrong with laying hands on the sick, but we're not going to push people over. And if the Holy Spirit puts them over, that's one thing. We're not going to push people over. We're not going to, listen, I've seen a lot of cool stuff, and I've seen a lot of fool stuff. And by the way, I've been part of it. We want to see the full working of the Holy Spirit, but it's not about us. It's about the Spirit of God. There was a man in the New Testament that saw what was going on. He said, hey, I want what you have. I want to buy it. And Peter said, hey, be gone with you. So really, what this is really about, everybody, is to our objective is not to say, look how great I am. You could experience this too. I want to see everyone flow in the gifts of the Spirit. I want to see everyone be confident in their, in their faith. Does that make sense, everybody? So we're not going to have superheroes walking around with, with certain powers. And we're walking around, oh, look at this person. Oh, look at this person. And what we've seen in the body of Christ right now, God's knocking these people down like flies. It's been happening. God doesn't want celebrity Christians. He wants good examples. Does that make sense? It's not about being a celebrity. not about showing off. It's about having Jesus do his work. We work in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And it's never about, well, I speak, oh, we're a spirit-filled church. They're not. Shut up. <laughs> Seriously. That's sick. How arrogant. Right? Don't do that. How can you say that? Because God hates it. Instead, why don't we stop being divisive and pray for those who don't know and be nice to them. Show them a better way. Right? I, I know like some fundamentalist uh, Christians don't believe God speaks today. I've had conversations with them. And I asked the pastor, I said, How'd you come? how come you went into the ministry where the Lord called me? Ah, the Lord spoke to you, didn't he? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, no, I was like, yes, he did. Same spirit that rose Christ from the dead is with us. So this is not about show-offing. Does that make sense, everybody? Please, please, please. We, we're just, we we want to see Jesus lifted up. We don't want anyone else to get the, we want to thank God for the gifting of a person. That's great. But let's not look at a person. Let's look at Jesus. And you can do this too. Okay? So I just wanted to preface that. The Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. The disciples baptize us in water. And if you give your life to Jesus and are following Christ, you're a disciple. So the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. The disciples baptize us in water. How do you know that? Well, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. What does it say? Who's he talking to here? His disciples. Who are his disciples? You and I. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the complete fullness of God. That's what we want to be able to have. So the disciples baptize in water, and then Jesus baptizes us in water. The Holy Spirit. I'll show you. I indeed, this is Jesus. I'm sorry, this is John the Baptist. I indeed baptize you with water. He's talking about John the Baptist. Unto repentance. But he, who's he? Jesus, who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will what? 
baptizo, Holy Spirit. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, which represents the last days when he gives judgment upon the earth. And this is part of the problem with biblical prophecy. It's sometimes we say it, and we don't know that it comes in stages, but that's why John the Baptist was confused about Jesus a little bit. But he didn't know this, that Jesus was going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit because he's the prototype of what you and I are to become. Is Jesus our example? Absolutely. Is he our example? Jesus is our example. So, be holy as I'm holy. As the Father sent me, so I send you. So, since Jesus had to be baptized with the Spirit for his ministry, who do we think we are thinking we can do it without being baptized with the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. And it isn't a one-time thing. In the book of Acts, it says, and Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit, which means he constantly was filled because you and I leak. The moment, I mean, there's been times I've been filled with the Spirit, and then I go home and I have an argument. It happens. So we want to be filled, be continually, the Bible says in Ephesians, be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like a dove in many ways. It will go away. R.T. Kendall in his book, The Holy Spirit, shared a story about how he was in England and he had a house. In the upper, uh, in the upper outside of the house, there was like a, a bird's nest and there was doves there. And you he, hear the doves. And he said if he, if he slammed the door too much, the dove would fly away. And at times, he even raised his voice, and a dove flew away. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will kind of, okay, fine, have it your way. When you and I choose not to forgive, when you and I get angry and choose not to walk on the Spirit of God, we actually grieve the Holy Spirit. And we can limit the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives because it's a partnership between us and the Holy Spirit. And being assembled together with them, this is Jesus, his disciples. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the what? Promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Do not leave Jerusalem. Do, do not leave home without it. That's way before the American Express slogan, which we don't use anymore. But I'm dating myself by telling you that. But he said, do not leave Jerusalem until you are endued with power. So they waited for the Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came and rested on every single one of them. When the day of Pentecost, you know what Pentecost means, by the way? It means 50. That's all it means. 50 days. The first festival of first fruits. Interesting, by the way. There's a lot more we could say about it. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a Russian mighty wind. I have a friend of mine, Sampa, who went to a seminary with me. He's from India, and he told me a situation where his brother was not serving God at all. And one night, his parents were praying and praying for, their, praying for their, uh, his brother, and one night, they heard like a, a mighty wind, and, and the Spirit of God hit his brother, and his brother changed. It was an amazing story. And I've seen things like this before. I've actually sensed the presence of God, and I've seen demons cast out. Listen, this stuff is real, okay? So the day of Pentecost had come. They were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, in other words, on every person, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all, what? All, or some, all were filled with the, what does all mean in the Greek? Thank you. It's not just a detergent. All filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other glossia, tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they did it as the Spirit gave them, as just a cooperation. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus. Give your life to Christ. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is only for the founding apostles. And once the canon of Scripture is finished, then the perfect will come. That didn't say that. 
For this promise is for you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. That's us today. So I want to show you some places in Scripture where you can see the, the, bat, the three baptisms. You guys ready for a few moments? I know this is more of a teaching today, but it's important we understand this. Okay, but when they believed, Philip, who was one of the evangelists, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. They're baptized normally, okay, in the water. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria, these are people that were the far-off folks that were kind of the, hated by the Jewish people because they were half-breeds, okay, they received Christ, big deal, had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the what? The Holy Spirit. They already gave their life to Christ. Now they're being baptized with the Holy Spirit. For as of yet, he had not fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10, there's another scenario where the first Gentiles come to know Christ, and Cornelius is there. as a supernatural set of circumstances. Peter is preaching to them about Jesus. While he's preaching about Jesus and who Jesus is, they receive it while they're listening, and they begin to speak in tongues. And this is what Peter says. Now, how did he know they spoke? How do you know they were full of the Spirit? He says, surely they're full of the Spirit because we hear them speaking in tongues. How can we stop them from being baptized? So just as we try to get it all patented down, God will mess it up. Okay, so we move on. So in Acts 8, verse 14 and 17, for he has not yet fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord, and they received the Holy Spirit. Then we go to Acts 19. And it happened while Apollos, this is many years later, was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He didn't say this. He didn't say that when he, he said to them, did you receive the right hand of fellowship? If you have a member of the church, he didn't say that. What did he say? When you believed, what? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Many people don't know who the Holy Spirit is. And it's, they're saved, they're good people. It's, the Holy Spirit does not make me better than you. The Holy Spirit makes me better than me. So we gotta stop all this. Some people think, well, I don't speak in tongues, I'm not good enough. No, don't, stop. don't believe that, it's a lie from the enemy. You are, all of us are a wreck without Jesus. We all need Jesus. And he's an equal opportunity to God. Okay, so we have not yet so much as heard whether there's a Holy Spirit, and he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said to him, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people that they should believe in him, that's Jesus, who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of who? The Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues, and they prophesied. Now, if, if I give you a watch, like a mechanical watch, a Rolex watch, if I give you a watch, do I just give you the second hand? No, I give you the whole watch. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you get the whole, whole, all the Holy Spirit. He's not parsed out. All the gifts are available to everybody. And so... I want to encourage you that all the gifts are available to all of us, what you'll see in a few moments. So in 1 John 5, 7 and 8, and there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. And so you can see the spirit. The spirit is the Holy Spirit, the water, and the blood. So I wanted to show you something very interesting. I, I don't have time to show you all this, but this is interesting. You can see the three baptisms or three parts of God or three gifts of the Holy Spirit kind of in this tabernacle. 
The Bible says these are all done as illustrations. So these things actually happen, but they show us something. What's very interesting is this. In order to minister, these are, a priest would come in, and the priest would have to come in through one gate. There's only one way to heaven, right? Only one way through God. It's through Jesus. Jesus is the gate. So you come through the gate, and then they have the, they have the bronze altar. This is where they had the sacrifice for the animal. That's salvation. Then they have the, the levier to, to wash themselves. That's baptism. And then they go in the holies of holies, and then there's the, the incense, and then they enter into the priestly area. When Jesus died on the cross, this curtain was torn, and, torn down. Now the access of all of us are kingdom of priests. So in order to fulfill our job to the greater capacity, you and I need to be saved. Go through Jesus first. We need to get, we need to get forgiveness of sins. We need to be baptized, right, to show an outward sign of an inward commitment. Then we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so we can minister powerfully. So I want to encourage you, all three, have you been baptized with three? Or just baptized with two? It's available to, to everybody. How to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Give your life to Jesus. Have you given your life to Jesus? I'm going to ask that the worship team begin to make their way up. Have you given your life to Jesus? He's the one way. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not through Buddhism, not through Islam, not through any other religion. Everyone has to go through Jesus. He's the only way you can be saved. Have you given your life to Jesus? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment. Have you, I'm going to ask you today, has anyone, have you given your life to Jesus? Today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Maybe you used to walk with Jesus, and you're not walking anymore. Maybe you've never given your life. There's three things he asked for us. Believe he's the son of God. Believe he rose again from the dead. Ask him to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, maybe believe in Jesus. Maybe you believe he rose again from the dead, but you've never given your life to him. You're still in charge and at large, and God's not. The only way we're really saved is to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and give your life to Jesus. How many would say, I've walked away, I want to get right with God today, or I've never done it? Nice and high. We had seven of them. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Well, let's pray this prayer. Can we pray it out loud? Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again from the dead. I believe you're the Son of God. Today, I choose to step down. I declare you are God, and I am not. I give my life to you fully. I ask you now to forgive me of all the things I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. Thank you, based upon my belief in giving my life to you, I am now your child in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's thank God. He's touching people's lives today. It's important. It's important. I met a person at a coffee shop uh, five, uh, about five years after. They came to church on a Sunday. They gave their life to Christ. They went in the military. They came back to visit their parents, and they thanked me in the coffee shop. Thank you. I didn't know who they were. I gave my life to Jesus five years ago in your church. You never know. Well, there's a connection. We're not done yet, everybody. There's a connection card in your, in your pocket of your seat. If you want to fill that out, I made a decision today. At the end of the service, come forward, give it to one of the people here or the front desk. Now, now that you've been giving your life to Jesus... Here's another part. Ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Ask him to do that. Just ask him. The Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? If, you, if, if your son asks you for an egg, you're not going to give him a rock or a scorpion, Right? So people say, well, if I ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil's going to jump on me. No, he's not going to jump on you. He's going to jump away from you. Because if you ask God for his spirit, he's going to give you his spirit. So, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? 
So give your life to Christ. Ask Jesus to baptize you and step out in faith and receive it. I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind to stand if you can. I'm gonna pray for you right now, all of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the way, I could use a lot more in my life as well. Don't be afraid. The same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead is here today. The Holy Spirit works with you in partnership. He's not gonna force you to do anything. When I first got prayed for, I remember uh, all of my dad said, you might feel something. And sure enough, I felt something on my, on my stomach and my, my tongue got thick and I began to speak in, in strange syllables. And then I did, it for a couple, I did it for a couple of weeks that I started to doubt it and I went away for 10 years. And then in my early 20s, I asked the Lord to come upon me again and I've been sp speaking my spiritual language. You don't have to speak in tongues to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but you get to. Doesn't mean you're better than somebody else. Tongues is not all there is. As someone says, it's like a pair of shoes. The tongues come with it. All the gifts are available to us. Okay, this is not a, don't, 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 you're good enough. You know why you're good enough? Because Jesus is good enough. So right now, I just get rid of all that nonsense. There's three objections that you'll have. Oh, this is not me. Uh, this is not God. This is me. Well, of course it's you. You have to do your part. She, uh, Peter walked on the water because he got out of the boat. And then God met him there. He step out in faith. And I'm telling you right now, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, you will receive it, hands down. That's it. So can we just ask, I'm gonna, you want to repeat after me to receive the Holy Spirit if you have not already, or a refilling. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and giving me a good place with you. Jesus, you said that you would baptize me with the Holy Spirit. In accordance to your word, I ask you now to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Empower me in Jesus' name. We pray for you. Lord God, I thank you so much that everyone that said that prayer with the heart, that you have come upon, you came upon them. I pray you would fill them, Father God, that they would see that something, something is happening in their lives. We ask for power. We ask for strength in Jesus' name. Amen. At the end of the service, we're going to have a prayer team forward to pray for you if you want more prayer for it. Obviously, we can't unpack this whole thing in one service. We'll have more opportunities for this. But we also want to give you an opportunity to give. There are four different ways you can give. You can see it on the, on the screen in front of you or the box is there. So, Father, I pray you bless this offering today. Multiply it and use it powerfully. And, Lord, I pray that we'd be able to touch more lives as a result of that. I pray you'd also meet everyone's need. And, Lord, I also ask in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're falling upon everyone right now. I pray that they would receive it in Jesus' name. Guys, go home, put some music on, and begin to step out in faith and watch what God will do.